Well, if someone ever told me that you had to climb a tree to test anchors, I'm not sure what I would have said. Hello, my name is Steve, and my goal is to find the world's best performing anchors. Now, the way I normally do this is by testing anchors in real seabeds using appropriately sized boats and roads, and I select scopes that I think are typical, at least for my part of the world. And I know that my scopes that I select are viewed by many people as really, really short. My, my go-to scope that I use for my larger anchors is 3.5 to 1, and I get, I do read my comments and I get, occasionally I'll have people say that it is ridiculously short. Uh, one person even said it was just stupid short scope. And I think for, for their part of the world and their anchoring conditions, that very well may be an accurate assessment. The problem is, is that there's, there's, there's just more to it than a, than a single scope number. Um, the, the variables are the, the depth of the water and the kind of road that you have. Uh, in short, if you've got a really heavy chain road that's really long and it's in, by definition, it'll be in deep water, um, you just don't need as much scope as if you are in more shallow water or perhaps with a rope road. And that's the kind of stuff this video is going to focus on, primarily chain catenary. And for those that don't know, Catenary is the curve that is formed when you suspend a line or a chain between two points in the presence of gravity. Uh, the harder you pull, the flatter the curve, and the less you pull, the shallower the curve. Now you can calculate these angles uh, using mathematics, but it's pretty complicated, and I suppose I could gut through those calculations, but um, my style is a little different. I'm, I'm more likely to use a hammer than a calculator to find the answers to my engineering questions. So that's just what I've done. I've gone out in the field and I've used a load cell to calculate the pull on chain and then I've got an angle finder and I determined, uh, determined some angles based on how much pull there is out in the field. So let's get to that. We'll check it out and we'll come back and analyze the data and see how it pertains to the anchors. Okay, this is Panopay's actual anchor road. It is 3 8 triple B chain. I've marked off 105 feet. And down here at the lower end of the chain, we'll call this the anchor location. You see I've got a come along and a load sensor. The far end of the chain is up in a tree. It is 30 feet above this anchor point. And this is the exact setup that I use for the bulk of my large anchor testing uh, when I use Panopay. Now, there's two errors in this test rig that we need to discuss. Uh, the two end up, I believe, canceling each other. But uh, the first error is the fact that uh, we're testing this in air. And when you are in water, the chain actually has some buoyancy. Chain, of course, doesn't float, but uh, there is a significant amount of flotation in chain. It uh, works out to be about 13% in salt water. So what that means is that if, if, if I measure a pull of, uh, let's say, 100 pounds down here at the anchor and it achieves a certain angle, well, in reality, uh, that same angle would occur with about 13% less force. So that, that's an error. Uh, the other error is the fact that the pull on any chain that has catenary um, and, and the two points, the upper point and the lower point, if, if they are at different heights, then the upper pull load will always be higher than the lower point. And if this is not intuitive to you, uh, consider an extremely short scope chain situation. Let's say you've got 110 feet of chain in 100 feet of water. You can quickly see that 
virtually all the chain is just going to be hanging straight down and the upper load will have to support just basically all the weight of the chain. Down at the lower end of the chain, there's just going to be a few links that'll have to support and the load will be far, far less. Now you can calculate just exactly how much difference there is if you know the angle up at the, up at the boat or up at the upper end of the chain. And uh, you can just use simple vectors uh, to, to figure out the, 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 the difference between the two, two loads. Now, unfortunately, I did not measure the angle up in the tree there, but I've got a pretty good estimate at, uh, at the medium poles I'm going to do. Let's going to say there's about 25 degrees of angle up in the tree, and this results in about a 10% increase in load. So, you know, for this test and our discussions, I'm just going to ignore both of these uh, errors because they are working opposite to each other. So in other words, when I see a load down here at the anchor of X, I think it relates very closely to the load that one will see on their road up at the bow of their boat when they're actually anchoring in water. All right, first I'm gonna crank it up till the chain is just starting to lift from the ground. Two thirty, two seventy, okay, the chain is now up off from the grass there, but it's still got a little bit of a downward slope. There's 300. Yeah, that's right here, chain is dead level. So I'm gonna say at 300 pounds, this 105 feet of chain at 3.5 to one scope just starts to lift up. Let's keep going. Okay, there's 400 pounds. Two point five degrees. Okay, we're right at uh, five hundred pounds. Seven degrees. Seven degrees at five hundred pounds. All right, six hundred pounds. Eight degrees. Nine point eight. Okay, this is a very important part of the test because I believe it is simulating with pretty good accuracy the conditions during my so called deep set test. Now, I've tested over a dozen anchors under these conditions in a very firm, sandy mud seabed, and most of them pass the test with flying colors. They dive out of sight and hold rock solid. However, there were three anchors that were not so good at the test. They were a 45 pound Delta anchor, a 10 pound Fortress FX-16 anchor, and then perhaps most unexpectedly, a 45 pound roll bar Rockna repeatedly released during this test. 780, 7.90, 8.10, 8.05, 10.5, 9.10, Close enough. Yeah, 
1,010 pounds. Eleven point eight. Let's go back and look at the dead man. I did drag the truck a little bit. I had to chalk the wheels. Just eyeballing it. I'm going to just say the middle of that is about three feet below a straight line between the two points. Okay, now I'm going to measure how far the rig moves as I release the tension. And this is going to tell us, um, you know, how much energy absorbing distance there is from one, from one pull number to the next. So we're going to start off here still at a thousand pounds and I'm going to release the rig slowly. Okay, we're at 900 pounds and it's moved about a half an inch. At 800 pounds, it's moved an inch and a half. So the last 200 pounds only took inch and a half. Okay, now we're at 700 pounds and we've moved two and a half inches since starting at 1,000 pounds. 600 pounds and we have moved a total of four inches since starting at 1,000. Okay, there's 500 pounds and it has moved a total of six inches. Four hundred pounds. It's moved a total of nine and a half inches. Okay, three hundred pounds. It has moved a total of sixteen inches. Two hundred pounds, it has moved a total of twenty seven. Take it back, twenty six inches. So there's a fair amount of energy absorbing distance below three hundred pounds, but above three hundred, there really isn't much shock absorbing distance. Here's a look at the chain at 300 pounds of pull. So this is the point where the chain just starts to lift up off from the ground. Anyway, here we are up in the tree. I've protected the bark with a nylon webbing strap. I don't know if you can see any of this chain as it stretches on down, but quite a bit of catenary. Probably should have strung a tight line between the two points and then take a measurement. But I'm gonna guess that it's sagging maybe eight feet. 
And once again, we are 30 feet above our anchor point down there. Now there's a bit of slope to the terrain. I've only had to climb about 24 feet up above ground. The ladder helped the first bit. Now let's try to relate these numbers to the real world. In this video, I put my load sensor in line with my anchor during a 20 knot breeze. And what we found was that the average pull was about 200 pounds with a few brief peaks at 300 pounds. Now I don't think there was enough time for the chain to assume its new catenary because those, those peaks just happened for a second or two. But we can say very safely that in 20 knots of wind, the chain isn't even beginning to lift off from the bottom with Panope at the scopes that I normally test with, which is that 3.5 to 1. Now, if we can, if we can figure what a higher wind speed is pretty, pretty accurately, we know that the force of wind acts with the square of the speed. So in other words, if you double the speed, you've got to multiply the force by four times. So at 20 knots of wind, we saw 200 pounds of force. 40 knots of wind is going to be about 800. Now, 800 pounds of pull, well, that's very close to the amount of pull that I use during my so-called deep set testing. Deep set testing is when I pull full power and we hope an anchor can, can hold. Uh, it's, it's actually not a lot of force. I figure it's equal to about, the, about 40 knots of wind. I've always kind of assumed that, and I think, I think my data kind of backs it up. Um, but most of the anchors hold. There's a few that didn't, and I get a lot of comments that say, oh, well, you needed more scope. Granted, more scope would have held that anchor better. But if you were using a rope road at five to one scope, you'd have the same angle of pull up. So this is just simple trigonometry. Uh, rope road, which we assume is gonna be a straight line between the two points, it's gonna have an angle of 11 degrees at the anchor. It's just about the same as my 3.5 to one heavy chain road pull at the anchor. So anchor chain comes in three grades, grade 30, grade 43, and grade 70. I've got the lowest grade chain, and to get the, to get the needed strength, it has to be 3 8 inch. If I was to go to grade 43 chain, I could go down to 5 16th size, and grade 70 would mean I could use quarter inch chain. Now the amount of catenary in a quarter inch chain is going to be far, far less than in the 3 8 So that's kind of a benefit of using the lower grade of chains. So a takeaway from all this testing and all this discussion that I can apply to this boat is that in, say, winds of less than about 40 knots, chain catenary still provides useful benefit in terms of angle of pull on the anchor. And then uh, the shock absorption of uh, that catenary provides it it goes it goes down very very quickly we, we don't need inches of shock absorption we need feet and the only way to really get that or I should say the best way is with a long elastic snubber it's typically just a piece of nylon row but other types of roads can be used nylon is most common and that's just what I would do if I was faced with uh, 40 knots and and building wind you bet, I'm going to pay out more scope and I'm going to do it with a long length of nylon. Now a takeaway for you is if, if you're a shallow water anchor or, an, or a person who uses a mostly rope road and you look at my 3.5 to 1 scope and think, uh, golly, this doesn't really apply to me, um, well, maybe it does. Maybe figure roughly that my 3.5 to 1 scope is equal to your 5 to 1 scope. Now that brings up another, another way to use this information, and that is for me to try to decide what future scopes I'm going to test with. A lot of people have asked me to test with rope roads and longer scopes, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to use the fishing boat, not, not Panope, I'll use the small fishing boat, and I'm going to test uh, the 45 pound anchors with rope road, and I'm not sure which scope I'll use. I'm certainly not gonna go less than five to one, but that's probably a good starting point. Um, seven to one sounds good. Um, it's gonna mean a lot, a lot of rope. Um, and, and I'm just trying to think of, you know, just generally anchoring around here. It's very common to be in 30, 40 feet of water. Well, golly, that's, that's an incredibly long road and it just, it just isn't gonna work, but it can sometimes. So, um, 
yeah, those are the numbers I'm thinking. Maybe I'll test five and seven to one, see if I can come up with any, any differences. Okay, I'll close it up with a disclaimer. Take all these numbers generally. Don't get your pencils too sharp on me. Uh, my data collection wasn't very precise. Uh, we glossed over a whole bunch of topics such as the, the surge capability. Uh, how big are the waves coming into your anchorage? Does your boat veer around a lot? Um, th th we could read and write volumes on those, on those subjects and it's, it's just far beyond the scope of a video like this. So just, just take the numbers and the, the ideas generally. And as always, anchor safely. So long.